In this video, I'm going to talk about my thought process in connecting some flash memory to my 8286 processor. Uh, what I'd like to eventually to do, of course, is actually write a program, assemble it, and put that onto my, my flash memory or my ROMs so that the processor can read that program and execute that program. I think I'm a ways from that yet, but at least I need to start thinking about how I might connect some flash memory, um, at least with what I have for, for parts in hand or uh, something to get me started at least. So that's what my uh, my goal is here, is just, just simply read from some sort of ROM. And uh, in my case, I'm going to try to use a flash chip, and I'll show you which one I'm, I'm going to try to use as I get into this. I'm not worried about RAM. I'm not worried about <clears throat> I.O. devices. I'm not worried about writes. Uh, really, I just want to be able to read from ROM. So that's my first goal here, uh, and see if I can work my way through through getting that done. Here is a flash chip that I've used quite a bit of uh, in my previous projects. It's this microchip, and specifically this SST39SF040. So that's a four megabit or half a megabyte. Uh, multi-purpose flash and you can see the pinout here and I'll bring back up the 8286 pinout maybe you can compare that and uh, you're probably going to catch there's gonna be some challenges here you know it's not going to just connect together and work maybe the way the way I want it to uh, real easily so I'm going to talk through some of the things as I understand it so far in the 8286 and uh, maybe share my plan and if any of you have uh, feedback and you can tell me I'm crazy or if you think that uh, this is a, a logical approach or a workable approach I should say uh, I'd love to, to hear your feedback in the comments below just as a reminder I'm not coming in with uh, experience here to say uh, what I'm about to to plan out is gonna work so this is my plan uh, I might get to the implementation of it and find out that uh, it does not work uh, the way I'm thinking about it which is fine, I'll learn from that, but uh, here, here's what I'm thinking at least. Uh, as I'm reading up on the 8286, you know, I understand that it's got a 24-bit physical address space. So I've got 16 megabytes of addresses going from uh, down in the bottom hex 000000 all the way up to FFFFFF. And I put the colons in there just for easy readability of these addresses. Uh, now when I fire up the processor, it wants to initialize and, and once it's done initializing internally it wants to jump to an address of ff ff f0 and start reading from there and you can see what that looks like in binary there and if you remember from my first video uh, i had uh, some led bar graphs showing what address was being read and this is what it looked like when it got to this point so it, it was showing that it was jumping to ff ff f0 and then above uh, the value that you see there is just this uh, NOP, this uh, non-operation or no operation that uh, I, I, I was feeding it for the instruction. So I know that that's where I've got to start reading as I get into this. Um, I also know that there's this IO address space, there's a 64K address space. I'll have to figure out how to work with that later. That's out of scope for now. I'm, I'm not worrying about that at all. And if I pull back up that flash chip, this is what I'm looking at. And, and again, I'm looking at the uh, 040 here, the 040. So the two outside columns uh, are showing what the pinout is for that chip that I'll be using. Maybe some challenges with that that I see though is the highest address pin is pin 18. So it's going from zero to 19, or sorry, zero to 18, meaning I've got 19 address uh, bits or address pins. I don't have 24 like I would want to hook up to the processor. Also, it only goes through uh, data lines uh, 0 through 7, meaning I've got 8 data lines coming out of this flash chip, and my processor is going to be expecting 16 bits uh, for data. So that's another challenge I have to figure out how to work around. So how am I going to do that? And here's what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm going to use this. Uh, this SST39SF040. I've got this processor that I'm using that I, I showed the pinout of that last time. And I'm going to actually double up and run two of these flash chips. And essentially each of them will provide a byte of the data and that double byte will give me the word. In other words, I'll have two flash chips each providing eight bits of data uh, for a particular address 
and that will allow me to let the processor read that full 16-bit or uh, double byte or word um, we might refer to it as. So that's my plan there. I'll grab two of those and that'll take care of the data lines, I think. Um, I'm still going to have some problems or challenges on the address side. So I, I got to figure out how to, how to get my you know, maybe address decoding put in here uh, to make this work so that when that processor starts reading that startup address, it's going to be reading from my ROM and uh, my ROM needs to be addressed properly for that. So back to this, what I'm thinking is then I am going to use this flash ROM. It's a half a megabyte of my 16 megabyte uh, physical address space. And I'm going to assume that the first five bits are ones. And so A23 down to A20, I'm just going to assume are all ones. And anytime that the processor writes and the, the first five bits are ones, I'm going to assume that I am now trying to work within my flash ROM. Um, okay, so that gets me starting, starting to think about how am I going to connect this together actually in a circuit. If I continue reading through um, the basically the documentation for the processor I'm using, there are these signals on the processor, this MIO, COD, and A, S1, and S0. And in the first video, I, I just simply said I, I don't know what these do yet, really. I kind of had an idea, but not uh, a lot of detail. Well, here I'm trying to dig a little bit deeper into that and understand them better. And it seems like, uh, as I look at this MIO, so it's a memory IO select, and it really tells me whether uh, I am doing memory access or IO access. And I mentioned earlier, I'm not worried about IO at this point, so I'm just focused on memory access. And then we've got the COD int A, and that's code or interrupt acknowledge, so it distinguishes instruction fetch cycles from memory data read cycles. Uh, so am I doing an instruction or a memory data read? And then I've got S1 and S0, and uh, they indicate initiation of a bus cycle, and along with MIO and the COD and A, and it defines the type of bus cycle. And uh, there's a nice little table provided in the documentation that looks like this, and it basically shows those four signals and tells me what bus cycle we're, we're looking at. And I'm going to be focused on memory data read and memory instruction read. And really my goal initially is just to have it read some of these knobs from the, the flash and, and call that a win, I guess, to get going. So memory data read, memory instruction read. And I suppose really all I need there is the memory instruction read, um, the way I understand this. But those are the two I'm, I'm paying attention to. And if I look at those uh, MIO, looks like that needs to be one and then s1 needs to be zero and s0 needs to be one uh, for that uh, really to tell me that i want to be reading from memory whether it's for data or for an instruction it doesn't tell me necessarily what addresses but if i start to combine all of this i take my um, previous uh, note about a23 through a20 have to be one mio has to be one s1 should be zero s0 should be one I should be able to now bring that together and start to glue in this, this flash ROM, this flash memory. Um, so that's what I'm going to maybe show a, a little bit of a schematic I've started. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I've completely thought through everything yet, but I'll show you where I'm at at least. And, and again, any feedback would be greatly appreciated and welcome. This is where I left off in the last video. And just maybe again to walk through this, you got the processor, I've got this adapter to put it into a breadboard. I have these LED bar graphs connected to quickly show me what address and what data values are currently being set by the processor or read in on the data side. I've got some LEDs showing me the status of S1, S0, COD and A and MIO. And then I had hard coded in this knob. And then I had my little reset PCB that uh, does a delayed reset. So it basically keeps this reset line. Uh, the card keeps a reset line low while it, it gives the time, uh, an, a processor time to initialize, like in my 6502s or 65816s. Um, now, those had an active low reset. This processor has an active high reset. 
So you'll actually see that on this picture, I'm taking this reset line out, it's an active low into an inverter before I run it into the, the reset here. And then of course I got the clock and again I can use this to uh, go through a slow clock, a 555 base slow clock or step through it step by step at this point. I'm not going to bother with uh, an actual oscillator, uh, that's way too fast for where I'm at. I, I'm really going to be stepping through this step by step more than anything. Uh, as I go through at least the next um, quite a few uh, videos I'm sure it's gonna be a while before I get to an actual oscillator so that's where I left off and I'm gonna jump over into my easy EDA is what I'm using for uh, basically uh, building a, a schematic as I go through this and so here is easy EDA and I, I know there are other tools out there this one has worked well for me so that's that's what I'm gonna use for now I'll zoom in into this in a second, but uh, off to the left is the processor. So this is a an 80, uh, 286 processor. I've got a little uh, note up here just showing that I am bringing in a uh, an active low reset from, um, I just put a pin header here, but from my other card. And I'm gonna flip that, uh, invert that, so I, that I have a, a, a good reset signal I can use. I'm also bringing clock in from that and I just put it to a pin so that uh, down here I can put in clock uh, that way. And then I have two of these flash ICs in here that you're going to see right here. Uh, one is for the most significant byte, one is for the least significant byte. Again, those two together should give me my word uh, of data that I need to feed uh, all of these data lines here. Um, as far as address lines, uh, those will come over to those flash chips also and you'll notice I'm going to bring over a0 through a18 to both of them you know the outputs of these two chips I'm going from d7 uh, down to d0 and here d15 down to d8 so I've got my 16 data lines I'm bringing my address in um, I'm pulling this write enable high so I'm never going to write to the flash which is appropriate um, the chip enable, I'm pulling low. This is an active low, so the chip will always be enabled from that perspective. And then the output enable, I'm gonna run through some logic uh, when it should turn on or turn off uh, basically these two chips uh, simultaneously. And let me just show that logic that I have so far. Um, so what I'm gonna do is basically look at those top four address lines, A23, 22, 21, 20, and if they're all high, I'm gonna run them, run them through a, a four input AND gate. If they're all high, then I'll feed a high into this NAND gate. So then I'm gonna take S0, S1, MIO, and I'm gonna bring those in to match those values in that previous table we were looking at uh, where MIO is, is high, S1 is low, S0 is high. That tells me that I'm doing a memory data read or an instruction read. And basically if all of that's true, so I'm, I'm in this uh, upper address space and all of these values uh, for these indicators tell me that I am doing a memory data read or an instruction read, I'm then gonna pull a signal low, and that is my output enable. And so I'll pull the, that low. These ICs then, at that point, will send out whatever data based on the address that's being fed to them, which will be a 11111 something, uh, the rest of the bits in that 24-bit address. I did also send out an inverted version of that just so I can add in an LED that will light up when I am accessing these flash ICs. Uh, so over to the right then in this schematic, uh, nothing uh, too exciting here, but I do have then that indicator. So anytime I am accessing the flash ICs, uh, I should get this LED lit up. I have the previous LEDs that were there to show me these indicators and then I have my bar graphs. And so bar graphs and just some SIP uh, re resistor arrays uh, to, to connect and show me those values. Um, so I also have some unused uh, gates down here and that's fine, I'll, I'm not worried about those right now. At some point, uh, maybe they'll get used as I build this out. And then I just was making some notes to myself up here. So I know I need to start reading at FFFFF0, which looks like this in binary. Uh, so in my flash, I'm gonna 
make sure that I assume that the first five bits are ones. And then this next 16, 17, 18, 19 bits is what the, that flash uh, chip accommodates going from A0 to A18. And then I'm also checking that MIO is one, S1 is zero, S0 is one. So if all of that is true, then that flash will be enabled. I'll get the LED on and I'll be able to retrieve uh, values. Now to get started, I think all I need to do for values is in this uh, most significant byte, I want to just load it up with zeros in that flash. And on the least significant byte on this ROM, I'll just load up uh, the, those knobs again. So uh, same, same value, I'll just write a whole bunch of those uh, to, to the flash. Uh, now later, of course, as, as I actually get into compiling code, or I should say assembling code for this. I'll have to uh, either replace this with a flash that does have a by 16 uh, instead of a by 8 output. Um, so that would be one option uh, or uh, I'll need to just split out my assembled, um, basically assembled output into uh, the most significant byte and least significant byte. That's what I'm doing on my custom homegrown 16-bit processor. Is I, it's a 16-bit processor and I'm using a pair of flashes exactly like this. But I wrote that assembler I'm using and when I assemble it automatically creates the, the MSB and LSB uh, images or binaries uh, for, my, for flashing those two separate flash chips. Um, and I can do that here. And I'm not uh, saying that I'm gonna get into writing an assembler here for the Intel stuff, but. I think uh, for this initial testing, I can get something going here that is workable. So I think that's it uh, as far as this is concerned. Um, that is my goal. And if I flip back uh, to the, the picture of the board, what that's going to get me to is, is likely, I think I'm going to reorder these LEDs up above in the same order as that table I was looking at. I'll add in the additional LED to show me that I'm accessing the flash. I'll have to put in a pair of flash chips here. I'm gonna to have to put in my AND, my NAND. Uh, I've already get, already have this uh, inverter, hex inverter here, and a bunch of wires. So that's what I'm gonna give a shot and see if I can uh, have it start reading these knobs from flash. Uh, if everything that I've uh, put together so far uh, actually works the way I understand it should work so far. So. Again, I might be missing something here, but that's my plan of attack. And in the next video, I will show you uh, how that comes out um, or doesn't, uh, whether it comes out well or not. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk through what I learn uh, as I put that together. So thanks for watching. And uh, for those of you that have a lot of experience with stuff with this stuff, feel free, drop me a note, put a, a note in the comments. Any uh, suggestions, again, are appreciated. I had some nice suggestions coming out of my, my first uh, video and posts and uh, even ended up spinning a, an updated PCB for the uh, 8286 out of uh, feedback there. And uh, actually I have a pretty neat PCB on order now that has a stackable daughter card that sits on top of the processor now that will show me uh, the indicator of all of the address and data values along with nearly all of those status flags, um, all the ones I've talked about uh, so far for sure. Uh, all those LEDs will be surface mount right on top. Um, so it'll save me a bunch of space on the breadboard uh, and clean up a lot of wiring. So that, that will be wonderful. Thanks again. And uh, I look forward to uh, getting another video out to you uh, in the coming week or two.